Today, we're going to look at the Euphrates River. What does it mean as a Christian or just a person in general with the significance of it drying up? We're going to look at Bible passages and how this all ties into end time prophecy we see in the Bible and Revelation. We're going to look at this video and then also some Bible passages and come to the conclusion, is Jesus coming back right this second or could it be longer? And does the river play a role in his sudden return. So let's take a look at this video here. Recently, a video showed a man showing a drop in the water level of the Euphrates River, which fell drastically. The water level in the Euphrates River in northeastern Syria is so low that 5 million people may be left without access to safe That's drinking water. That's insane. There was a moment when the strip of land between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers in the Middle East was so lush as to earn itself the nickname of Fertile Crescent. So you might have, uh, you might remember hearing, you know, the Tigris River. If you look at Genesis, you could actually see the Garden of Eden. The Tigris River is one of those main rivers. Um, what does this mean for humanity's faith? The, Garden of the drying Eden, of the Euphrates is significant both biblically and scientifically. Many Christians are keeping an eye on the Euphrates River, which is virtually dry and has a Bible verse related with it that mentions four fallen angels after it has dried up. Strange sounds and tunnels beneath Ooh. wrecked land formations accompany these biblical revelations. That's supposed to be the angels. So is the historical Euphrates River drying up because of an imminent fulfillment of the passages in Revelation? Or is there another reason we should be aware of? And are these tunnels where fallen angels are imprisoned? Or are they simply forgotten underground passageways of the ancient Mesopotamian Empire? Stick around to the end to get all the answers. The civilization of ancient Mesopotamia grew up along the banks of two huge rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris. The peoples of Mesopotamia relied on these rivers to provide drinking water, agricultural irrigation, and vital transportation. This is pretty cool. I just really want to show you this. The Garden of Eden, Tigris River. I just want to show you this because I think it's cool. Okay, a river flowed from the land of Eden. This is talking about Genesis 2 when God made the earth, right? And this is in the Garden of Eden, watering the garden, dividing it into four branches. The first branch called the Pishon, uh, then you see the second branch called Gihon, the third branch called Tigris, and then you see the next one called the Euphrates. So we see the Tigris and the Euphrates actually rivered the Garden of Eden. So these are literally like the Euphrates River, one of the first rivers in the world created by God. So that's sort of cool. I thought that was cool. I hope you do too. Make sure to like and subscribe, by the way, for more awesome videos like this. Hopefully you think Asian they're awesome. Roots in the midst of it's a okay huge desert. Know. Over centuries, the flood pulse of the Euphrates and Tigris left the southern plains of what is now Iraq with the richest soil in the Near East. For 3,000 years, the people of Mesopotamia maintained a significant degree of cultural unity, even though politically they were much more fragmented. The rulers of various regions, Sumer, Akkad, Babylonia, and Assyria, dominated Mesopotamia as a whole so at one cool. time or another. During periods of great political unity, rulers extended their influence beyond the two rivers, ruling surrounding territories and controlling the Near Eastern trade routes. The Sumerian and Akkadian kings of the late 3rd millennium BCE made the first known attempts at creating large-scale empires. The river, which stretches for 1740 miles, is regarded as Asia's longest. The river flows from Turkey to Syria and Iraq that. before joining the Persian Gulf. However, the Euphrates River is in peril. The river is significantly smaller than it was a few years ago as a result of Iraq's neighbors Turkey and Syria's water policy, a two-year drought, and years of abuse by Iraq and its farmers. There are also two passages in the Bible that foretell the Euphrates River's eventual drying up. God pronounces judgment against Babylon's officials and wise men and against its false prophets, warriors, horse and chariots, and treasures. Then God says, a drought on her waters. They will dry up, for it is a land of idols, idols that will go mad with terror. Jeremiah 50, 38. The waters of Babylon are the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Both rivers are drying up now. Is this the fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy? This prophecy was most likely fulfilled by military action when the Persian ruler Cyrus invaded Babylon in 539 BC. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, Cyrus diverted the Euphrates water sufficiently to allow his army to enter through the conduits between the city walls, or this the prophecy will be fulfilled during the Great Tribulation, which corresponds to the Sixth Bowl Judgment of Revelation 16. The Euphrates River's drying up has also revealed several ancient ruins and a cave. Some see the drying riverbed as a fulfillment of the Bible's end of the world prophecies. However, a video has recently emerged from this location that is both intriguing and disturbing for many people. 
Have the four fallen angels trapped beneath the Euphrates River's waters been recorded? What about the sounds of the scorpion? All right, we're going to look at some Bible passages, but I thought that would give you some interesting context to what's sort of going on, the history of everything. Um, got questions. This isn't exactly like, you know, probably the best site to find theological questions, but they did a good job of pulling some of these different Bible verses together. So we see the Fertile Crescent. See, it runs through Turkey, Syria, and Iraq drying riverbed as the fulfillment of Bible end time prophecy. So we saw the first, the video sort of talked about it, right? Jeremiah, you see a drought on her waters, they will dry up for it is the land of idols, idols that will go mad with terror. So this is the first prediction, okay? Then the second prediction that they mentioned is in Revelation, okay? The seven bowl judgments, the judgment the judgments of the seven-year tribulation start with seven seals. We see this right in Revelation 6, okay, with the seven trumpets and seven bowls, okay? So the sixth bowl judgment, they're saying this is the ultimate, the penultimate judgment of the tribulation is drying up the Euphrates River. And you see the Bible verse right here. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This prophecy not only identifies the judgment, but also gives the reason for it. So a great army from the east can cross the Euphrates unimpended, right? So if there was this massive river, an army couldn't really go across it, right? So it would need to be dried up. This is for the last battle we see in Revelation in Hebrew called Armageddon. This is when Jesus returns and the battle fought at Armageddon will result in all God's enemies being destroyed. Okay, so this is the first thing, right? And it says, this article says a few different possibilities, right? Concerning the first prophecy of Jeremiah. Okay, and it says it was either fulfilled by military action by King Cyrus. We, we heard that in the video. The prophecy was fulfilled by drought at some unknown time. The prophecy is being fulfilled now as the Tigris and Euphrates River are diminishing. The prophecy will be fulfilled during the Great Tribulation. The prophecy has double fulfillment once in the past and again in the future. I think that's actually an interesting take, right? Once in the past and then again in the future. Um, I'm leaning towards that, that one personally. Concerning, and by the way, I'm no like biblical scholar, okay? I'm just a dude on the internet that wants to learn with you the Bible and share what I've learned, what God's done in my life, and just that God is real, and, and we should look at the world and current events, not just this, but from a biblical worldview, so okay? So <laughs> throw your hate in the comments. Okay, concerning John's vision that the Euphrates will dry up, this is interesting. This is a future fulfillment, right? You know John. John is one of the apostles in the Bible, right? The Bible actually says that John was one of the beloved Jesus's beloved disciple, okay? And he was he was one of the I think one of the only apostles in the Bible that actually wasn't martyred. And he was sent to the island of Patmos. And that's where he got these visions from the Lord and he wrote them in the book of Revelation, okay? So this is interesting. The sixth bowl judgment comes near the end of tribulation. The antichrist will rise to power the two miracle working prophets will preach and many terrible judgments will occur. Obviously, we're not in the tribulation now. You would know it if you were. Um, but I believe hopefully we get raptured before all this disaster takes place. Now, according to Revelation 18, Babylon in the end times will do much commerce by ship, suggesting that the rivers are in this area flee freely flowing dirt during tribulation, at least for a little while. The supernatural drying up of the Euphrates in Revelation 16 allows an army from the Orient to march westward. So really interesting. And here are the seven bulls of wrath. I would suggest you look into this, do a little Google search, and it talks about these different like judgments that God's making, okay? And you see sores, you see seas of blood. It's funny, river of blood. It reminds me actually of, we see in Exodus, um, when Moses, you know, the judgments came on Egypt and the Nile River turns into blood and there was like locust. And actually really, it's funny how it sort of parallels that. The scorching sun, darkness, war, okay? And God's fury, but I thought we should look at just Mark 13. This is Jesus talking. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father knows. So right then and there, 
No one could really know when Jesus is coming back. Jesus literally said this, only the Father knows. God the Father, you know the Trinity, um, God the Father, you know, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, right? So only God the Father knows when Jesus is coming back and when all these events will take place. Now we do have you know, scripture with these prophecies and stuff, but you know, no one really is going to know for sure. So if someone tells you they know when Jesus is coming back, I would be worried. And the Bible actually says a day in, in like God's courts is, is like, you know, it could be like a thousand days for God is like a day for us. Okay. I could pull up that Bible verse, but you, you got what I'm saying here. Okay. Matthew 24, I thought this is good because you might be wondering, and that's how I started the video, is Jesus coming back because of the Euphrates, Euphrates River drying up? Well, Matthew 24 is a really good passage, and Jesus is actually saying this, and you'll hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic, right? We're living in a time now with Ukraine and Russia, wars, earthquakes, right? All these different things, right? But the Bible says, yet these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. I thought that was interesting, and I wanted to highlight that. Nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but this is only the first part of the birth pains. There's going to be more to come. Then you'll be arrested, persecuted, you'll be hated all over the world. And, you know, you see the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And hopefully that's you because you're watching this video. Not only because you're watching this video, but because ultimately you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I have nothing to do with this. I'm just a messenger. That was a joke, but I don't want people to get all, you know, their undies in a bundle over that. So, Exodus 14. I thought this is really cool, guys. Let me know in the comments. Make sure to like. We saw, right, about in this, right, let me scroll to this, the supernatural drawing of the Euphrates in Revelation 16. You see it right here, to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Where else do we see an army with a king going, trying to go across a river, right? Well, you see it was when Moses and the Israelites, right? You see this right in Exodus 14, the Egyptians pursue Israel. Remember Pharaoh, Moses, let my people go, that whole thing, right? You know the song? Oh, baby, we got to go. It's like a little kid song at church. When you, If you grew up in church, you know what I'm talking about. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving, pick up your staff and raise your hand over the seas, right? Pretty cool. And all of Egypt will see my glory and know that I'm God. This is what uh, God said down there. Um, but I was getting too excited with this. Divide the water so the Israelites, Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. This is God telling this to Moses, right? So the people of Israel walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground, right? And then we see what happens next, right? Moses raised his hand back over the sea. The water rushed back into its place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them in the sea. Then the water returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh, of all the Egyptians who had to chase the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. So I thought that's sort of cool because we see in Revelation 16, it talks about an army, right? The Euphrates River would have to dry up so an army could cross over. And then I thought, oh my goodness, we see in Exodus an army. Well, we see the Israelites, right? fleeing from slavery from the Egyptians. And we see Pharaoh and his army trying to get across that river, the Red Sea, or I guess the Red Sea, it's not a river, but, and then they get smacked down by the Lord. Revelation 9, 14, this is a big Bible verse. And the voice said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates river. And there's all these crazy videos going on. And Hey, I don't know, but it's like piercing sounds. People say they're angels that are bound because now the Euphrates river has dropped levels. They're finding all these interesting caves and stuff. And some people are saying, Hey, maybe, you know, the angels, uh, the, the four angels are bound under there. I don't know. But this is that Bible verse I showed you. So let me know in the comments about this. I thought this was an interesting little video for us to take a look at these events. And by the way, if you want to join my exclusive community with Discord and more direct access with me, or you just believe in what I'm doing with sharing the gospel, make sure to head over to my Patreon down below. You're much appreciated.